Connection established. Welcome. Let's install Home Assistant Core and Mosquito MQTT Broker manually on Raspbian OS that is located on Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and make Home Assistant start automatically every time when Raspberry Pi is powered on. In the description of the video, I'll add links to all web places, software and hardware you'll see in this video. To get a clear picture, before we start with installation, let me explain why and what I'm doing in this video. Otherwise, if you are in a rush and want to start with installation right now, you can jump to it. Note that this installation method won't allow us use of add-ons and I will try to make this simple so everyone can follow. If you see some step is not necessary for you, just pass to the next one. I choose Home Assistant Core and Manual Installation with Virtual Environment method because I have installed Pi-hole on my Raspberry in past and would like to run both Pi-hole and Home Assistant on the same Raspberry simultaneously. To see how I installed Raspbian OS and Pi-hole on Raspberry Pi, you can check out one of my previous videos. In top right corner you can find link to that and all other related videos that I recommend to watch. After setting up Home Assistant Core, I will show you how to set up MQTT Broker manually and how to add simple configuration and edit user interface for a relay that I'm using to power lights on and off our Home Assistant. In past I already made few videos with MQTT and Home Assistant that was installed on my Windows 10 PC, but a lot of things changed since then with arrival of new versions of Home Assistant and also my setup. Previously I had Home Assistant running just when my Windows 10 PC was powered on and that wasn't perfect solution. Now I would like to have Home Assistant available 24-7. That's why I'm installing it on Raspberry that will be, at least I hope, always powered on. With new versions Home Assistant got add-ons and that makes a lot of things easier but with installing Home Assistant on this way add-ons won't be available and I'll need to set up everything manually. Ok, now let's finally start with Home Assistant installation. Open Home Assistant website and select Getting Started or Get Started button. On this page with title Install Home Assistant, we will follow link to alternative installation methods. As you can see on this note, let me mention again that using this installation method we won't have add-ons available. I'm scrolling down to the Alternative Installs section where I'll select Virtual Environment as another user. We arrive to manual installation on Raspberry Pi page and here we will follow installation steps. Here I'm starting from point where you should already have Raspbian OS installed on Raspberry Pi. Also you should have enabled SSH connection on that Raspbian. If you're missing both or something of that, see my videos for setting up SSH and Raspbian or follow instructions on here recommended sites to be back on track. For hardware part, connect UTP cable from router or modem to Raspberry and give it power. Ok, that's done. Let's continue. We will need to have Python installed on Raspbian. More about that shortly. After you connect the Raspberry to your router, Raspberry should be available over some IP in your LAN. If you know that IP, great, you can start with SSH connection. If you don't know IP, you can find it out with tool like Angry IP Scanner. Download link is in description. Install it and enter range of your LAN IP addresses. In most cases those IPs are with mask24 and that is 192.168.0.1192.168.0.254 or 192.168.1.1 to 192.168.1.254 Enter it and press start. You should find IP there where hostname says Raspberry or similar. From before I have set static IP to my sweet Raspberry which is last IP in this pool. So in my case Raspberry IP is 192.168.1.254 Ok, now that you know IP, let's SSH. I'll use PuTTY for SSHing. Enter IP, leave port 22 and let's open. Default username is Pi and password is Raspberry. After first login on Raspbian, it is recommended to change password, so your good neighbor that you gave access to your Wi-Fi won't mess with your settings. Let me change password. Ok, 
update and upgrade system. This can take some time, so be patient. Then install all those dependencies where also Python should be installed. Next, we will create new system account and home directory with that line. Now create home assistant core directory and change its owner. After that, create virtual environment to have things nicely separated. Now you should be inside home assistant environment. After that, check again what is the minimum required Python version. In my case it is 3.7 or later. It should be installed inside environment after that given command is executed. So let's execute that command and wait. We are on the last step to have Home Assistant ready. Install Home Assistant with command pip3 install Home Assistant. And installation is over. Let's start Home Assistant with command has. For the first time, it can take 5 to 10 minutes. You can check if Home Assistant is running by entering Raspberry IP followed by port 8123 in the browser. In my case, 192.168.1.254 and then port 8123. And site like this should appear. Now that we got that done, it would be great to have Home Assistant always running up on Raspberry Pi. For example, every time Raspberry lost power and it's powered on again, starting up Home Assistant manually wouldn't be nice. So we'll create service and add it to start Home Assistant automatically. I will stop Home Assistant from running with Ctrl C and open Auto Start with Systemd Community Guide and follow instructions. Link will be in the description. Let's check that we have Systemd on Raspbian with this command. You should already have it installed. If not, use command sudo apt install systemd. Go to Python virtual environment section. Make sure Home Assistant is installed in right directory as stated here. Now we will create new file with this path given here. Copy that content to clipboard. Open PuTTY SSH session and exit Home Assistant virtual environment. So you're Pi user. Go to directory with cd slash etc slash systemd slash system. Ok, let's create service file here. Write next sudo nano home dash assistant at home assistant dot service and press enter. Enter password if needed. Let's paste that content inside from clipboard with mouse right click. It should look like this. Scroll to the bottom of this guide and also copy these two lines for auto restart on failure. Navigate with keyboard arrows and paste those lines inside service file. To save that, press Ctrl O and press Enter. To exit, press Ctrl X. Now, to next steps section. Let's reload the configuration, then enable service at boot. Just replace your user with right username. It should be Home Assistant if you followed virtual environment setup. Ok, last step. Again, in case you didn't stop Home Assistant from running, stop it now with Ctrl C. And let's start it with this service. Command is here. Go check if Home Assistant is available. Ok, it is. Nice. We are done with setting up auto start and now always when Raspberry is working, so will Home Assistant. Time to create user and set up some Home Assistant things. Enter new name, username and choose some password. Press create account. Set up things however you want here. I'll just leave it like this and press next. I'll press finish here because we will set up relay for lights manually in a moment. And welcome to Home Assistant dashboard. Time to edit user interface and create some button to toggle lights on and off. Find link in description to configuration file for UI and copy it. On dashboard, go to top right corner and click on three dots and select configure UI. Then press three dots again 
in top right corner and select Row Configuration Editor. Select Current Configuration and replace it with new one. Paste and press Save. Let's just edit a few things. I will set icon to light bulb and mark show state. You should see that entity is not available. To fix that, we need to create a right configuration for Home Assistant. Open another site from description where you'll find that configuration and copy it. After that, open PuTTY. By the way, here you can see the version of my Home Assistant. Let me clear that fast and exit Home Assistant virtual environment. So you should be Pi user again. Then navigate to slash home slash home assistant slash dot home assistant. And here we are looking for configuration file. Open it with sudo nano configuration.yaml. If you open it without sudo, you won't have permission to write. So add sudo before command. Now delete everything inside that file and with mouse right click, paste copied configuration. Press Ctrl O and enter to save changes. Now exit with Ctrl X. And let's restart Home Assistant service to make changes live. Go to Home Assistant dashboard and wait changes to take effect. After a short time, dashboard should look like this. Ok, great. We are almost done. One more thing is missing, and that is MQTT Broker. Because Home Assistant Core is not all-in-one solution, it's basically a Python program and doesn't include add-ons, we need to install MQTT Broker manually on Raspbian. That information was missing puzzle for me for some time, and I found that thanks to Home Assistant Community Forum. So if you have any trouble, check it out. We will install a Mosquito Broker with next command sudo apt install mosquito or sudo apt get install mosquito and that's all now Raspbian is running system MQTT broker that's listening on port 1883 light pop up button should now look like this let me connect a relay from previous project to raspberry just to give it 5 volt power here I'm using USB to TTL module you can find link in top right corner to find more information about that relay project. And now, time to test this. All is working good, and it is quite fast response. Let me also mention, Home Assistant app is available for Android and iOS, so definitely check it out. Once you set it up, app auto discover Home Assistant, and then you will need to log in as you did in web browser, and that's all. Ok, we came to the end of this setup. If you've come to this point, then thanks for being patient. If you have any question or suggestion, just write it in the comment section. I will look to make installation guide for Home Assistant with add-ons in some future video. And that's it. I hope you learned something new and found useful information in this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like it. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe. Good luck.